Uh, in studio with the delegate, Michael Height. Good morning, Robert. Michael Carl, senior member of the crew. Good morning. The Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning again, Rob. Lauren Schultz. Good morning. And via telephone, Joseph Joey Torts Ferretti. Joseph, good morning to you again. Good morning. Uh, we are skipping intros today, time constraints and such, and also it would kind of be odd to transition from a very serious matter in the first hour to being goofy. So uh, <laughs> rather than do that, we go right to Joe Ferretti with issue number one in hour number two. Joe, go right ahead. Boy, who, who wants to talk about Trump and Biden now, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to um, talk about that, right? <laughs> I, well, I, as I sit here, Rob, uh, you know, looking at this petition and thinking about where we are, uh, not only with this particular case with the sheriff, but also in the Eastern Panhandle with uh, a number of other either investigations or petitions that are pending. I, I just wonder uh, what the panel thinks about this in terms of, a, a, I guess, a half a, a glass half full or half empty analysis. Are, are, are we more concerned about uh, you know, the, these numerous events and allegations occurring in quick succession here. When I'm talking about the, the county clerk in Berkeley County with tens of thousands of dollars missing. Uh, we've got uh, the petition in Jefferson County to remove two elected officials, and now we got this petition in Berkeley County. Uh, I'm just wondering, if are, are we more concerned about uh, these, these allegations pending regarding our public officials and the allegations of impropriety, or are we, or should we be comforted by the actions being taken to ensure compliance with the law? I guess it's a half, you know, it's a glass half full, half empty analysis. Where are we on this? Uh, Joe, I want to, just by the way you made your statement, I want to make sure that it's very clear in regards to the Berkeley County clerk and the embezzlement situation. That's not the current clerk, Tony Petrucci, you were talking about, you are talking about a case of a person who worked in the clerk's office before Tony was elected. Uh, I think it goes back to John yeah, Small's Yeah, Tony tenure. would be upset with me. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Yeah, just to clarify. <laughs> right. So uh, let's go first to Bill Stubblefield for opinion. Yeah, glass half empty, half full. This case, Joe, I say it's half full. Uh, I, I'm respectful and and with admiration of the action taken in both Jefferson County and Berkeley County to correct the problem. They did not look the other way. They charged straight ahead, and uh, they did the job as I think they should do the job. We're always going to have bad apples. Uh, everywhere you look, there's going to be bad apples. But where the real damage is done, where our elected officials uh, do not take the corrective course of action. So I look at it glass half full. Mike Carl, are you allowed to comment here? Well, just to be brief and light, um, it makes me want to move back to Hampshire County. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure there's members of our audience who would like you to move back to Hampshire County. <laughs> I'm not one of them, though. <laughs> Mr. Height. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to go with, uh, with with Bill Stubblefield here. I think it's half full. Um, I think this it's almost impossible to know the true nature of people when you elect them. You hope for the best. You hope you're making the right choice. Um, but sometimes, you know, once they are elected, I think uh, a lot of times their true colors come out. And uh, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And I think in these particular instances, we have seen both um, in in the case of you know Jefferson County. Um, again, these are allegations; they're innocent until proven guilty. But I think it it shows who those two individuals were, um, and I, it also shows who Matt Harvey was. So, um, same thing in Berkeley County. Um, I think it uh, it sheds a light on on uh, the fact that there is a an appearance of um, uh, transparency and that. Uh, many of the people we have elected are doing the right thing, and uh, so I look at this as half full. There was a rally against Matt Harvey's actions to petition for the removal of the two Jefferson County commissioners. Uh, my understanding is that there was uh, maybe eight, ten people attended that. That's what I was told. I don't know how factual that is or not. Larry Schultz, on to you. Yes, um, it, it is. It is uh, very interesting to see uh, this sort of thing going on in, in these two counties. Um, 
And ordinarily, you would think that what's happening is some sort of partisan divide. In a lot of places where the balance is in place, you might have two Democratic commissioners and three Republican commissioners, and they're at war with each other. Here, for some reason, everyone's a Republican, or virtually everyone is a Republican, and the war is is still going on. I guess that makes me believe there's more to it. In other words, there's... It's not just political partisanship, um, which you might wonder about if it was split 50-50 somehow. Um, the, the fascinating thing to me, to, to just go back for a minute, is that in the case of the sheriff with uh, criminal charges, there's a beyond a reasonable doubt standard. With the civil uh, claims, it's a clear and convincing standard so that he can be acquitted of all criminal acts and still could be dismissed. And um, that, that's interesting. It's kind of the same family as O.J. being acquitted of murder yet being convicted in a civil case. It, precisely. And, and in O.J.'s case, it was just a preponderance of the evidence, mm -hmm. more likely than not. Clear and convincing is a, is a higher standard, but still it could result in a different outcome. Sure. Um, uh, I, what a have you bring up a point here larry because part of this that has raised eyebrows is the appearance of impropriety in the sheriff directing business to a place where he used to work in and apparently still does uh associate employment with himself despite being the sheriff of berkeley county and the point was made that it's possible he was just taking contracts moving them to the local vendor where the county could be saving an extraordinary amount of money as opposed to an out-of-state vendor, and thereby maybe he's not personally financially benefiting from this. He's just saving the county money by getting a better price on a contract. Your response to that was? Well, it, if that is the case, that's certainly better than the presumption we all make, which was that he is getting some kind of remuneration for this. Um, but still, the thing that you do in that situation is as the sheriff and the employee of the private contractor, you step out and you have the purchasing people or whoever has that role in the county government step in because they aren't, it's not possible to say that they're being uh, unduly influenced by being employed by the vendor. And so it, it, that's a, a problem we solve at all levels of government every single day. And it wouldn't have been that tough to do. Uh, you could have gotten, uh, there's probably nobody else in the uh, Berkeley County government who works for that Jefferson County uh, racetrack. And so the only person you wouldn't want doing it is the guy who does work there. And what you do is you turn that over to the county attorney or you turn it over to the, the county executive and they negotiate the deal. Joe, back to you for the final point. Yeah, and, and to pick up on what Larry's saying, if there's any question in one's mind about whether or not their activities uh, breach a fiduciary duty, breach a, a, a public office duty, um, or there's some kind of ethics concern about double dealing or self-dealing, whatever the case may be, you can easily reach out to the Ethics Commission here in West Virginia and get an opinion on that. So that uh, there's really no excuse if you cross that line uh, for not having considered your other options and, and, and getting guidance on, on whatever it is you're doing uh, for your own benefit or, or for the benefit of another company. So, uh, you know, these, these allegations are, uh, again, troubling, uh, but they are allegations. I'm so glad that Harley Wagner uh, issued a statement on behalf of the sheriff, too, because there's always another side to the story, and we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. The bottom line is I I'm – also a glass half full on this whole thing because uh, uh, you know your institutions which we rely upon uh, have to be able to police themselves too in many respects and I think that's what's happening here and I would like to point out that uh, we broke this last night uh, as soon as we had the information it was posted on our Facebook page and the statement from Harley Wagner is exclusive to us uh, at the time it was issued, at least anyway, as well. So uh, keep that in mind for those of you, and you know who you are, who are the cynical among you. 
uh, and I'll not take it any further than that. Bill Stubblefield, issue yeah. number two. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my issue. I want to stay local as well. Uh, in the case of Jefferson County, we have a county commission that is not working. In the case of Berkeley County, we have a sheriff that uh, that has been charged by uh, the county commission and also the prosecuting attorney. So there could be some disruption of of working relationships there and also with the sheriff staff. My question comes up is that in both cases it's been referred to the circuit to judicial system and this is going to take weeks and weeks to resolve. It's not going to address the problem in Jefferson County that we do not have a county commission working. It does not address the problem in Berkeley County that we may have a strained working relationship. And in state statute does not anyway address how to take care of this intermediate time. Intermediate time could be a few weeks, could be several months. Uh, should we, in fact, ask our legislators uh, to uh, to draft some something in place? So, if this situation happens in similar to Jefferson County or similar to Berkeley County, that we're not left in this this void of of the working relationship being uh, being frayed. Let's start with a delegate who happens to be in the room, Michael Heights. Um, so possibly. Uh, yeah. I would say, you know, you, you bring up a good point and, and maybe uh, some legislative action needs to be taken. Um, unlike a lot of legislators, I will be the first one to say that I don't know it all. And um, it, I, I wouldn't know how to draft this legislation so it didn't become – cumbersome and maybe even screw stuff up even worse um i would have to ask um you know somebody like yourself that's been on the commission and maybe a lawyer to get involved and say how would we craft such a thing um to make sure that uh you know we th there is some kind of a semblance of order in between um the allegations and and the the whole trial period to make it happen right um so my answer is yes that you're you're probably right we probably need to take a look at that part of the statute and 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 make some minor changes to it but i think we need to be careful in doing so mr schultz um i think that the legislature might be able to draft something I'm not sure it would be possible ahead of time to foresee all the circumstances that might make it a disaster <laughs> and might make it even worse. Unintended consequences. Right, yes. Right. Okay. And, and so, I mean, none of us, I didn't spend any time in my life thinking about what happens in Jefferson County if two commissioners refuse to show up. Um, I, I never thought about that before in my life. <laughs> So there's got to be other ones we haven't thought of, and if we write a, a, a statute to deal with these, will we not crimp those other ones and cause another opening? Um, I'm not sure that it's a solvable problem, except by keeping in mind that the people involved who are in this dispute on both sides in Jefferson County are willingly, uh, both sides, are willingly saying, well... We're not going to do any business as a commission. That's something that ought to make a different at a difference at election time. Um, whether you believe it makes a difference because the people were right not to come in and vote uh, with the commission, or because they were wrong, that should make a difference. So I think the fix is not legislative, but uh, ballot box. I think we finally have a scapegoat for who to blame for not having a contingency plan for the Jefferson County Commissioners not showing up, and that's Larry, who freely admitted he didn't spend a second of his life <laughs> figuring out what to do if this happened. Mike Carl. Well, I once again find myself in strong agreement with Larry. Uh, <clears throat> adding more central control is clearly a step in the wrong direction, and 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 the the. Local political pressure and influence is the answer, and it'll 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 play out. Joseph Ferretti. Well, everything I agree with everything being said. It's true. Uh, the legislature can't craft legislation to deal with every possible contingency here. Uh, I think, and I hate hesitate to say this because I have not researched it fully, Rob. But there are two civil actions pending in Jefferson County regarding the the county commissioners refusing to show up for work. 
We've got the petition for removal, which we know is going to be a month in terms of process. But we also have a writ of mandamus pending where a land development company with over a million-dollar bond uh, that needs to be released because they have satisfied the conditions of the bond, uh, that land company is continuing to pay interest on that bond, and they have filed a writ with a circuit judge in Jefferson County, which would seek to command the Jefferson County Commission to convene and at least address the issue of the bond. Uh, It is a compelling case. And I, I, again, not having researched this, I don't know if uh, and when that will be addressed and whether it will be in such a manner that uh, the county commission will also all commissioners will be under a court order to convene and do what they must do as county commissioners, address that bond, and if satisfied, release it so that that land company, land development company doesn't have to pay interest on it anymore. Uh, so th- there, there is a possibility here of expediting the process to at least get the county commission to do some of their work. But clearly, the uh, filling of the vacancy is something that they don't seem to be in a position to, to do. Goes back to you, Billy. Yeah, uh, ballot box is always the way to do things. I agree. However, the way things are looking now, it's possible that there will be no county commission until next election, a year down the line. I don't hope that doesn't happen, but that's what it's indicated. And so you can get the answer, uh, get part of the work done by various uh, writs by, uh, in front of the uh, judicial system, but there's a lot of stuff not happening in Jefferson County right now that needs to be addressed, and there's no mechanism to do it. Does anybody know uh, on the f- uh, five members of that county commission, is it five? Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, Who's up? It's or four. How actually, many are it's, up? It's actually four because there's one missing. Right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I don't think it's either one of those two, and that's why I. I yeah. it's, something has to be done before the ballot box, uh, yeah. like like yeah. you mentioned, because yeah. you can't go a year or that's two right. years without having any uh, county business being done. There has to be something done in the interim. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right. On that note, we'll take our halfway through the nine o'clock hour break, and uh, when we return. Uh, Mike Height, you're on the clock. Jackson Brown, plan is back in as we move on to issue number three. Uh, Mr. Height has passed, and we go instead to attorney at law, Lawrence Schultz. Just so it's clear, he didn't, he didn't really mean that he's passed. He's deferred. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that smell was building in the corner of it. was a pretty there. sad song you started with. I was afraid somebody might be misled. <laughs> but he will be missed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Height, we hardly knew you. I, I deferred because the the Harmon issue was my issue, and I felt like we just spent a whole hour talking about that. So no, I'm going you, to you had a you had a Biden issue in there as well. I did, yeah. but we've been staying local, so. Yeah. Well, the way I, I, I'm not sure what Hornby said to Height when he left the room, but when he came back all angry with his blood pressure, all yeah. the inconceivable that he might have passed away. Thanks, <laughs> Red. Um, I've got another local issue, though not Berkeley County. Morgan County schools are on red watch status now uh, from the State Department of Education, meaning that four of the watch indicators that the State Department of Education tracks in order to uh, uh, pass on school performance, uh, four of them uh, or more, uh, they're behind on or they're uh, near the bottom of the state's performance. And, you know, this is a difficult thing. The most optimistic view you can get by searching online for who has the best education system. The most optimistic one I've seen recently is West Virginia at 49, only Mississippi behind us. And there are now some some newer ones that show us even behind Mississippi. When your state is in the 49th or 50th uh, category and your county is one of the five or six in the whole state that is um, on a red watch status. Um, What sort of education, if you live in Morgan County, are your children going to get? Uh, They they interviewed the Morgan Messenger, interviewed uh, the, the superintendent of schools in Morgan County, and most of what she said was kind of hard to understand. It was, uh, shall we say, uh, some corporate speak or some bureaucratic speak, 
But what came to me out of it was there was a little tone of blaming the children for not trying hard enough. And I'm not sure that's ever going to get us uh, out of this mess. Uh, I, my question for the panel is, um, as time goes on, what are we going to do to make um, this sort of problem go away and perhaps move up into the mid-40s as, a, as an education state? Joe Ferretti. Well, um, it is disheartening, Larry, and uh, a couple of things come to mind. Number one, uh, I hear a lot of folks who advocate for uh, doing away with the State Department of Education, and my question would be, who then will be doing oversight of 55 county school systems, much like what's being done here? Uh, secondly, uh, those who advocate for local school control, and I'm one of them. I, I love the fact that county boards of education and all can, can set a lot of policies and, 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 and put a lot of things in place to educate our kids. But there's got to be standards somewhere. And what we're seeing here, and this is not unique to Morgan County, a lot of school systems in Berkeley County, or in West Virginia are under a pretty heavy scrutiny right now regarding how they handled COVID funds, how they're handling their other business, and how they're teaching our kids. And we see the state taking over school systems like Upshur County and Boone County. And there's going to be more to come, apparently. So... Uh, I, I think we are seeing just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the problem on a county level. And uh, I fear what we're going to uncover with this, with this greater scrutiny. And the solutions are elusive, expensive, and uh, so far seem to be uh, really just a hodgepodge of ideas without any direction. I have often uh, advocated for a Marshall Plan regarding our educational system in West Virginia, I've yet to see it. Delegate Mike Height. Well, I think it's important to note that we need to have standards, but the methodology behind those standards has to be equal from state to state. And I'm not so sure it was in this particular case. I'm hearing different things uh, that, that SAT scores were used as the, the methodology, the standard, um, and that other states, and for many years in this state, it, SAT scores were uh, attained by those who were seeking college education, who wanted that higher education. They needed to do well on an SAT um, to get into college and, and possibly the college they wanted. Um, so there was a, an effort by those students to do it as good as they possibly could. As I understand it, all kids in West Virginia are taking the SAT to to determine this standard. Well, if you're a child and you have no interest in going to college and this SAT test means absolutely nothing to you, then there's no incentive for you to do well on it. Then, you know, most kids are just like, I could care less about this if that's the case. Um, so I can see where we would not be comparing apples to apples from state to state if that is the case. So I, I, I would, I would question um, the the methodology and the accuracy of, of these um, scoring. Do it. Yeah, I, my sense every time we talk about education, we come back a circle of firing squad. We always look for somebody to blame. Uh, we blamed in the past State Board of Education. We, uh, I hear uh, uh, Larry, someone say, blame the blame the children has been involved. We frequently say. The, the the parents that are not engaged, uh, the parents that are kind of aloof from it are the ones that's a problem. Or the drugs are a problem. The legislators are a problem because they're not as uh, not taking the uh, as aggressive position they have. The pro the basic line is we're always blaming somebody else and we're not to get into the root of the problem. I am hoping, Mike, thanks to you and your colleague, that this teacher's aid in the K through second grade or third grade mm -hmm. will address some of these problems. During the formative years, we'll be able to provide more personal attention to the students. 
especially those students that need it the most, the ones that have a parent that's not engaged, the ones that feel that they're adrift. I'm hoping that will solve the problem. Uh, but I do think we need to find some way to stop blaming everybody and to come up with a solution that works. Now, that's very easy to say. Man, I can sit behind this microphone and say that, and if you ask me what's the answer, I say, I don't know. I'll ask my friend the legislator, Mike Height. He'll solve the problem for me. Uh, that's but why that's, you like to. That's why I like it. But I do that to everything. So every every time there's a problem, carry it to Mike Height. Okay, but I don't know the problem. But we do we do tend to use a circular firing squad, and I'm not sure it helps all the time. Uh, we forget there's a cultural issues that we have to address. But I'm really, really, really hoping that this uh, uh, teacher's aid in the early grades is going to give us the boost we hope we think it might. Mr. Carl, well, I, I agree with Bill's last specific point uh, about the initiatives that the. Uh, legislature has recently taken to improve uh, process in, in the schools, but the, clearly the underlying long-term problem is the central control by the unelected state board of education that is not susceptible to legislative oversight, and that is a fundamental problem that we've lived with forever. And Morgan County apparently just not as. Uh, overcoming that problem as well as other counties. Are you for the uh, elimination of the State Board of Education, Mike? Yes. Well, uh, 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 absolutely. And then answering Joe's question, who oversees the counties if you eliminate the State Board of Education? But the, the legislature makes laws, you know, that they have to follow. But, but, it's, but it is not uh, uh, outside, non-legislative, you know, elected group that is calling the shots. And and by and, and Governor Justice's opposition to Amendment Four, which would have at least made the them the state board subject to legislative oversight, it was a huge mistake. My, uh, Joe, does does Mike Carl's answer to that question of who oversees the counties if you eliminate the state board of education satisfy you? Well, I, I, it, it's twofold. Uh, legislative oversight. I mean, we can debate that, and, and I think that has some merit. But eliminating the state board of education. I don't know the legislature that sits for 60 days a year uh, and, and, and by design are part-time uh, you know, uh, employees of the state. I, I don't see how they're going to have the wherewithal to do these audits. Uh, and some of these audits are, are audits of accounts and, 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 and things of that nature. I don't think that kind of granularity is going to be something the legislature can tackle. So I still think we need a state board of education to have some oversight of 55 county school district delegate yeah I, I i think you can still have a state board of education but you need to look at at a lot of the other states do they have the same kind of control that it does in west virginia in west virginia it's pretty heavy-handed it's it is the fourth um fourth rail of government in the state of west virginia it doesn't need to be this heavy-handed um you can have a state board of education and still have legislative oversight and still have um, a whole lot more authority at the local level um, so right now it's way too centralized and you know I agree with Mike you you either need to have legislative oversight and more local control or you need to do away with the State Board of Education Lawrence part of the problem that's affecting West Virginia schools is that unlike and 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 Morgan to Berkeley is a good comparison because Berkeley County is growing. Morgan County is shrinking. And there doesn't seem to be an automatic answer under West Virginia policy for what we do in that situation. Because the kids aren't making the decision about what county to live in. <laughs> Mom and Dad make that decision. Sure. The other point I just wanted to make is I believe that education, public or otherwise, is the sole ticket to the middle class in the United States of America. Agreed. If you're not in the middle class today, your sole ticket as a child to getting there is an education. Does that mean a college education? Not necessarily. You just might need to be a better welder than the guy next to you. But you need to know how to learn, and not just learn Shakespeare, but learn uh, metal uh, technologies and and how to run a uh, threading machine uh, for, for threading bolts and whatnot. If you can't 
develop the skill, the learning skills in your public schools, then there's no ticket to the middle class. Larry, you're absolutely right. But that's why I would say the SAT is the wrong measure, the wrong device to measure how well kids are educated right now. Because you don't need to take the SAT to be a welder. But you can be very profitable and and live a very comfortable middle class life as a welder. So why are we forcing kids to take the SAT? It's not just... This, it's not just a college entrance exam. It's also the scholastic aptitude test. And so in order to be a welder or a computer uh, programmer or uh, a number of other things, you may not need a college degree, but it would certainly help you to learn if you were well-read, if you have uh, knowledge about the uh, people who came before us and what they thought. Um, and if you had the ability to uh, do simple algebra and those kinds of things, a scholastic aptitude test isn't really, um, it, I mean, they call it the college boards, but it's used for other things as You're well. You're absolutely right. But crawl into the mind of a teenage uh, a kid, a, a girl, boy, whatever, and, and say to you, ask yourself, if I'm, if you're giving me a test that it doesn't matter how I score on it, how well am I going to prepare? How well, why, what do I care? I just want to get this done. I'll color in some dots. I'll go the other way. It really doesn't matter to me because I don't have to, I don't get graded on it. You know, I, I just want to go to recess. I want to, you know, so why? I, I why? just want to go to recess. I'd simply that. be, I, I'd simply be um, interested to know, and I don't, what the more successful states in public education do with regard to that question. What tests do they give to measure progress? Um, I don't know. Um, I can't say I'm enough of an expert to say. And if there were some differences that were shown to be valid, then okay. One of the ways we're going to get that teenager to have some feeling about it is to make sure that he understands that his future is dependent on this. And, you know, when you're 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, it is time to come out of the uh, Pokemon jungle and (laughs) the Pokemon jungle and and get into uh, actual thinking like adults are supposed to do. And and we don't make a big enough uh, deal of that. I'd agree with you. The, the, The problem is we have to find a way to inspire these children who are not inspired. Not simply say when the bad test scores come out, well, the kids didn't try very hard. Well, but you're using it. If let's say the top ten states use the SAT score as well, but they're only using it from kids who are going to college. So they're not requiring everybody to take the SAT. Only the ones that want to take it and are college bound. So now their test scores are by college bound students, and they're comparing them to our students who are not college bound. All of them, a whole right. group. So what do those other states do? For that group of kids who they won't make take the SAT. Well, that's what, my, how that's do my they question. Test the them? I don't know that the methodology is equal across one state to the other, and yet because of the way we do things, we rank 49th or 50th, and instead of could we be in the middle 40s or even the 30s or 20s if we use the same methodology as, as the other states that are ranking in the top and, 10? And I don't know enough about that to answer it. What I will say is... There are a lot of kids who take the SAT. Their parents say to them, no, I know you don't want to go to college, and you may join the Marines as soon as you, but I want you to take the SAT. Um, Let's see how that, uh, if we compare over state to state, how that works out. But but the legislature's recent action with that third grade, you know, check thing uh, is, is an example of what ought to be done so that, you know, so it isn't a voluntary test. You know, I think Larry's point before we move on to Mike's uh, final uh, issue here is a good one. I think it would be pretty cool if my HVAC technician could show up, rip out the furnace, and explain to me what the hell when Burnham Wood comes to Dunsonine means. I think that would be a wonderful mix of uh, the skills. <laughs> and use an algebra while he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to issue number five. And for that, we go to Mr. Michael Carl. Well, I'm going to move move up to the national and even international level and with a lot more positive uh, point, uh, the, the 
just earlier this week, the the Congress, you know, led 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 by the new speaker, uh, passed an interim, you know, temporary uh, budget extension. And the question is, uh, does that have positive implications for the prospect of future, you know, spending control and more rational uh, operation of the of the Congress and the federal government. Still needed Democrats to pass it, though. There are, what, 10, 11? Oh, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Them. But yeah. they, they needed Democrats to do it, to do this. Billy? Yeah, I, I hope it is more positive. I'm concerned, though, about the 90 Republicans that voted against it. And I'm also concerned about the action that they took against McCarthy, the Republicans led by the uh, Freedom Caucus, that took a penalty with McCarthy because he tried to enlist the Democrats. Uh, I think if you look at that vote alone, Mike, it's very positive because it did show true bipartisan. But the faction uh, within the Republican Party, 90 folks that dissented said, oh, we're not going to care about funding government, to me, is disturbing. Hey, did we lose Joe, by the way? No, I'm here. Yeah, okay. okay. I just got a, I just got a, a signal from Mike Carl and a text from Calling at the phone lines are dead, but Joe, you're still there. Okay, that's good. At least we still have Joe. No, I, I, I did not. I did not pass. All right, Joe. You, <laughs> we already lost Mike Height. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Joe. You're next. Well, I, I, Congressman Chip Roy took to the floor uh, after the vote and just went ballistic on those Republicans who supported this continuing resolution, and uh, I think he kind of highlighted or with some foreshadowing what's to come. Uh, they gave Speaker Johnson a pass because he had only been on the job for a couple weeks. But uh, when this comes up again in a month or two, you're going to have another battle royale on this. And I, I can see where uh, you know, we might be looking at a government shutdown because it, it's clear that a large contingent in the House is not going to support even current level spending. And uh, that's where they're going to draw the line. And I think we're going to be uh, faced with a real prospect of not having a government soon. Mike Height. Yeah, I think it's positive in the short term. Um, that it, It's nice to see that there is some bipartisanship. But I, I think Joe's right. I think long term that um, there are enough Republicans in the House that don't want to see any um, additional spending. They want to see significant cuts. Um, they've been screaming about s significant cuts for some time, and uh, they're going to hold the line. And I think that number 90 may grow um, in time. Um, so while this is a, a short-term win for the new speaker, I think long-term this is, this is not going to work out very well, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I, I, I thought originally this particular speaker was going to be too hardcore and would not be able to elicit any um, Democratic uh, votes, but it seems like he can. Um, he, he can be bipartisan. He can work across the aisle. Um, but those 90, um, they're going to be a thorn in his side. I, I think we all agree we need to, to rein in spending at the federal level, and uh, I, I think for the ones who want to go about it their own way, who want severe cuts, those 90, we need to start in their congressional districts. I think that, that's a great idea. I agree with them 100%. Maybe even with their salaries. Let's <laughs> begin with their salaries. <laughs> and, and it, it's got to start somewhere with the cuts that hurt people. Let's start them in their districts, uh, Larry. It will not surprise anybody who listens to this show to think, to realize that I've lost pretty much any hope I ever had uh, that we were going to have a successful legislative run. And, and a big part of that was just the other day in a Senate hearing when the senator from Oklahoma jumps to his feet to challenge the, the head of the International Teamsters Union to a fight on the floor on the floor of the Senate, and Bernie Sanders has to wave him down and say, come on, you're a United States senator. If you got to be reminded of that during a Senate hearing, 
Maybe you're not. Fit. Yeah, Bernie Sanders, uh, the voice of reason. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's another kind of alarming thing. If he's the voice of reason, yeah. where are we? <laughs> May I remind uh, you, you're a United States senator. No big challenge to the fight. And, and also the sucker, and also the sucker punch has been dri- given by McCarthy as he walks down the aisle. Yeah, well, I think that was an elbow shot the to the kidney, kidney guy. Yeah. Said right. Yeah, that's an allegation, by the way. Mike Carl. Well, I'm, I'm interested. In- what, what oh, I hold on, you, you, you get final word. I forgot to go to Joe first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Joe, okay. go right ahead. I already commented. Oh, well, in that case, you okay. are right, Michael. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it's not only, and, and I am just get so tired of everything is the Republicans' fault. The huge, excessive, crazy spending is not just the Republicans' fault. Nope. And and the other side is not just the substantive issue of excess spending it's the process that the congress democrats and republicans have adopted to uh remove merit of uh, and discussion and just have arbitrariness this and this one exa- just one example is 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 the the fact that you know a member of the a majority party one member could try to push out the the speaker that's that, crazy that's mm-hmm. frightening that's absolutely frightening and, and so they need to change the process as well as the substantive law well there's a lot they could do to reduce spending and they could start a lot of it with the the manner in which they conduct government uh, in, in the budgeting process, and this uh, manner of spend it or you lose it at the end of a budgeting, at the end of a fiscal year with the government. I, I worked in an office in Alexandria where at the end of every government fiscal year, our government sales reps were overwhelmed with business, and, and they came back and told stories of we delivered another machine, they, what, they stick it in a warehouse where there's 20 other machines they've never used, so they got to spend it because if they don't, they lose it. That's right. there, there's, there's, I mean, the, the waste, fraud, and abuse line is is overused, but in some cases it applies. And 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 that shows the signal the the value of the free enterprise system and profit incentive versus spending somebody else's money. Well, that that's a good point, Mike, because in these departments, maybe they should be incentivized to save money instead of to spend right. it. Yes. You know, because if you're forced to lose money because you didn't spend all of it, well, maybe you just have someone who's better at running an office. But their organic purpose in every one is to spend money. Yeah, that's the organic well, purpose. But, 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 that's but, part. but the, the organic purpose is to have a better government, and a lot of times that means spending less money. Well, go, go well, one of the things that makes this so hard to imagine even happening, though, is this image of these two older men screaming at each other on the Senate floor. I mean, some of the things that have been said here at least make sense. And if you view things a little different than me, you might agree with some of them 100%. But as long as these people are crazy like this, well, that's true. I don't think you're going to be able to agree on what they have for lunch. Maybe we could raise money by having a pay-per-view where that senator fights the Teamsters (laughs) Union president. We could charge $40 per view. Better have an ambulance waiting. (laughs) This segment of the show brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester. I encourage you all to get your final thoughts together. And I remind you as well, no show next week. We are uh, shut down for the entire week as we enjoy our Thanksgiving holiday vacation here. Final thoughts next. Final thoughts. We begin with Joe Ferretti on the phone. Joe. You know you're getting old when you catch yourself putting your reading glasses over the pair you're already wearing. <laughs> Larry Schultz. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, everybody be safe out in the deer woods on Monday through uh, Sunday of Rutting. next week. Rutting season. Mr. Stubblefield. I commend our prosecuting attorneys and the Berkeley County Commission for doing what they thought was right. Mr. Carl. Here's take a, another step toward their next bowl. Mr. Height. Uh, have a safe and happy holiday. Happy Thanksgiving to all. And uh, to our audience, thank you for hanging out with us again today. And to our guests on the program, you stepped up big time by doing your duty today. We're off next week. See you back the week after that. This is Talk Radio, WRNR, Martinsburg, and TV 10. We'll talk to you again in about a week and a half. It's 5 o'clock somewhere.